Hello everyone and welcome back to a YouTube video. I'm New Disciple and this is the channel New Gaming for anyone new or who doesn't know. Uh, I've been doing a lot of content on Twitch for Pad of Exile. Ultimately I still do consider myself a variety streamer but I have had a big focus on Path of Exile lately, so I just want to say that and invite those that are interested in Path of Exile gameplay, especially at this point in time when I'm uploading these, this video goes up. Uh, a lot of people are going to be not producing content. A lot of the streamers waiting for the next league will not be producing content for PoE, but I'll be producing more. I'm focused on trying to grow while there's less competition because a lot of the streamers have switched over, and so I want to produce uh, content. I'll probably be doing a video every other week at minimum i'll try to do one every thursday but every other thursday for certain i'll have a video going and uh, i just want to again encourage you guys if you enjoy what you see definitely leave some support i'm a very small streamer but i pour a ton of time into the content that i make on twitch and youtube and i'm trying to grow and your support would mean the world to me so thank you so much without further ado let's get into today's video so i wanted to talk about how i did in the most recent event the zizaren class gauntlet this is a very big event, uh, probably the biggest PoE event. I think it had over 30,000 participants this time, maybe even 40,000 uh, players, uh, which is a lot for PoE at once. And um, there were tons of prizes and rewards for reaching different milestones. The game was way harder. It was hardcore, despite everything being more difficult and more more deadly. Um, you only had one life per character, and you had to, you know, pretty much start from scratch if you died. And I played in this gauntlet with very little experience. I did have some practice, but uh, I didn't get a ton of practice in. Um, and I, I wanted to talk a bit about how I did, because I did way better than I expected. Uh, I reached level 90, and this is the first gauntlet I've ever been able to practice for. That's not so impressive until you realize I played my own build that I made myself on stream. And it's one of the weaker classes at the moment. Uh, I played an Elementalist, which is the witch, uh, it's a witch subclass. And this is a class that did worse than most other classes this gauntlet because of nerfs to one of the more popular builds. And um, despite that, I was still able to get with my own build that's not even one of the popular versions to the top 50 in this event. And I was very, very uh, proud of that. And I only ended up dying, not because of a mistake or anything. I actually have a clip here. We'll go ahead and roll that clip of me dying in the gauntlet. And uh, I want to talk a bit about uh, uh, the build after. Okay. Uh, please. Please, no. <gasps> no! I was full health and I tried to log out and I died! So, yeah, that death was brutal. It's, uh, really, really sad in me because I was 52 when I died, as you see, and the top three get prize money. But the thing is, 30 or something of the top 50 at that time when I died were dead. So I was only competing with like 20 other players that were above me. And I really do feel like, even though my build is not meta or popular, uh, although some people have played Hexblast, it's very, it's like less than 1% of the meta. Uh, I, I felt like I was in a very, sorry for the mic, a very unique position with my build that the bossing playstyle was so safe, the damage uptime is constant because we do an ignite that lasts up to seven seconds and so i felt like i was in a very good position to start pushing bosses after i leveled a few more levels i was about to hit level 91 which would have put me in the top 20s or so witches and half of those over half of those were dead so i would have been competing with only 10 or so witches and i was about i don't know if you could see the xp bar in that clip i was about like 80 percent to the next level which would have put me in the top 20. So despite a disappointing end of the tournament, that was a real bummer. I was very, very happy. My only goal of this gauntlet was to reach level 90. I, I think next gauntlet, if you want to see more PoE content from me and want to see me play my own builds and participate in these really difficult events and even go for prize money and, and do all these challenges, I aim for next gauntlet to try to finish the top three. Of whatever class I pick, it'll be a build that I make. And I do a lot of this on my stream if you like this theory crafting fun stuff. Um, 
I, I aim to push for top three and to win prize money and to try to just get my name out there and, and actually hopefully be successful with this game and, and grow this stream. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and quickly stop ranting and talk a bit about the build. So what is the build? I don't know if I really described that at all yet. So I was playing a Hexblast Ignite Elementalist. And I won't go into a big detail here. What I'll say is the video gets 20 likes, maybe we'll say 15 as I'm a very small YouTuber. If we get 15 likes, I'll make a guide on the build. But long story short, let me do a quick summary. So Hex Blast is a skill that a lot of people don't like because it's clunky. It uh, is a play style akin almost to uh, Blade Blast Bladefall, which is very popular. So you have a setup skill, which in, with Hex Blast is your curse. You set the curse up. After one second with the, the keystone, Doomsday, it reaches max Doom, which I won't get into now. I just know that it increases the damage of Hex Blast by a massive amount and the damage of ailments it inflicts like Ignite. And so Hex Blast, you wait one second after casting the curse, then you detonate the curses on the enemies and they're they're ignited or whatever you use to do damage and um i was prolifying that ignite it was a really really big ignite we were gonna aim for like three million dps on cirrus in gauntlet uh that was my goal i don't know how high i was when i died it was feeling pretty good on the five link i did t10 conquerors and stuff we'll show some clips of that now all right the truth is cold let me show you. When I'm ready, and not before. Very low damage. That's not too bad. It's not great though, yeah. It's a T10 Veritania. I would really not want to do Baron. Pretty much dead. Okay, that wasn't too bad. El Hesman will be terrifying though. He takes this long to kill. Oh, looking forward to that. Yeah, I um, I was feeling really comfortable with the build. I'm really looking forward to what it could push, but that's not neither here nor there. So it it prolifs a giant ignite, really really high DPS, and it can prolif it, you know, in a pretty great AOE, especially if you take the um, elemental ascendancy, the pendulum of destruction, or whatever it's called now. And you get 60% AOE. It's very, very nice. I'll have a POB link down below. And again, if we hit 15 likes, I'll do a, a more in-depth guide. So yeah, you kind of like Bladefall Blade Blast. You have a one-two combo. You set up and then you detonate this big amount of damage. And it prolifts through packs. And uh, it's great at bossing because the Ignite lasts so long. And has a really, really, you know, uh, potential high DPS. And you have full uptime on your damage. You just need to cast it once every seven seconds or something. Um... So if that sounds interesting to you and you want to see a guide, then let me know. Uh, so let's let's really quickly summarize the build, and I won't get into too much detail. Uh, just to give a bit more preview, I'll have some more clips, and I'm actually going to talk over these instead. So pros of the build, it has a great Ignite proliferation clear. Uh, the AoE on the version in some of these clips is not nearly what it could be. We're missing the 60% AoE node because in Gauntlet, I just wanted to, until I get a little tankier, I wanted to map with the uh, elemental damage shield because all the enemies do extra elemental damage. Um, 
but uh, we would get more AoE than what you're seeing in some of these clips. It's safe and strong bossing. The playstyle is kind of akin to brands. You throw your damage down, and you can focus on avoiding, and then after a couple seconds, you need to redo your damage. It's it's very, very good uptime, very little setup. Unlike Bladefall Blade Blast, where you're constantly casting, you just cast once with the Ignite version, and uh, you have this great amount of damage and great amount of uptime. It has many options for you know, specking into more damage or into more survivability. And you can even play this build with many classes. Some people have been playing a uh, Hexblast Ignite Hero Fant, I've seen. I've seen a Hexblast Ignite Trickster that someone was playing on Softcore. He had like 90 million damage per Ignite, if you're, you know, interested in something like that for Softcore. It's not per second, that's per Ignite, but he had really, he had like millions and millions of damage per second on the Ignite. Like probably, I think it was like 16 million or something per, uh, per, per second that he had. So multiple classes and multiple build options if you're interested in a specific class or if you want to compete in like the class gauntlet and take a, a different version of the build to compete in a less popular class. Um, and it, it has multiple options for multiple budgets. I'll actually include two POBs on a completely budget version of the build with like SSF viable items, items that you you'll you know you can easily easily craft yourself. No uniques at all. I had one million serious DPS. And that's because of some strong synergies the build takes advantage of. Some strong mechanics and synergies the build gets to, to really enjoy and be the beneficiary of uh, working together. And so even on a, a complete budget starter like setup with no uniques and no, no hard to get or influence crazy items, I had a million serious DPS and uh, I, I feel like we would have gotten there on the five link. Obviously I wasn't quite there yet, but I feel like we definitely would have got there, you know, probably the day I died in Gauntlet had I not died. Um, Let's talk about some of the cons, because I do want to be honest, there there are some people that will not care for this build. And, and then there's not many cons, and this is from someone who plays it a lot, but I'm trying to be honest. Uh, it's a two-button build. Some people just don't like that. Some people don't like to do your main damage while you're mapping. Some people do not like pressing, you know, this and then that. And it's not because I don't think people are lazy. It's because people, and it's a very real thing, they get wrist injuries from repetitive stress by clicking so many buttons in PoE. And I totally get that, because I've actually had carpal tunnel myself uh, from different games that I've played. PoE, you know, most recently, I had to do a lot of wrist exercises. I actually bought some stuff for that. But it's a very real concern, so I do understand that. What I've done is I, I've moved... All the damage that I use on my mouse. And so I'm just using one hand rather than spamming flasks and abilities with the other hand. And so just the flasks are on my left hand and then all the damage is on my mouse. And that has felt pretty good. I've actually had a, a good time with that with this build and, and it's really alleviated some of my wrist pain. Um, some people, I, I really, really like golems. And even in Gauntlet, you'll see in some of these clips, they rarely ever died. I had no problems at all with the golems. Even in ultimatums, uh, there was very few times where like three or four golems were dead. Even as crazy as ultimatums get in the gauntlet, because everything has AoE, everything's faster, everything does extra damage. People got to remember that although the golems may seem too easy to let die when you're using them just as a buff, which is what our build is doing. You're just using the golems for the buffs and you don't really spec much minion life. They're completely immune to elemental damage. They don't take any cold lightning or fire damage. It's like zero. And uh, as you level them up, like to level 20, and then you get quality on them, they get extra max life, 20% max life. So I had very few problems with them dying. They will obviously die from time to time, but if it's a boss that does mostly or all elemental damage, they'll never die. I mean, it, it, and, and they resurrect themselves after four seconds anyway. But I, I'm gonna, I, I am being completely honest here. So the moment I ascended the second time and took that the golems are immune to elemental damage nodes, I never had an ailment inflicted on me. And I didn't I didn't run a shock flask, I didn't run an ignite flask. Just to be safe, just out of you know precaution, I ran a cannot be frozen flask. But from the level 55 lab until level 90 when I die in this clip, even though I didn't run ailment immunity besides on a life flask, I ran, uh, which is an instant life flask. It's not like a permanent uptime flask, like a like a silver flask or something could be. Uh, I ran freeze immunity. But from, from then on, because each golem gives you 35% ailment avoid, so even with two golems, you have 70% ailment avoid, I never was ignited, frozen, or shocked from then on. 
it's that consistent and i i really believe in them but um i will say you know i did feel the need to run a freeze immune flask just in case but i had no problems um i i I think that I felt very good. If you're playing on softcore especially, they're definitely fine. If you're playing on hardcore, I, I, you know, just as a precaution, if you can fit it, get a heat uh, flask that makes you freeze immune. I don't think that's too hard to fit in, but, uh, you know, to each their own. I do understand some people don't like uh, an unreliable buff, you know, especially at hardcore. It is consistency is kind of king, which is why champion is so popular in hardcore. But I, I really like them, and I really I really felt quite tanky with Mind Over Matter and the fizz damage reduction from the Chaos Golem and the tons of regen for every Agnostic and Stone Golem. We had like 1,700 life regen a second or something. It's crazy um but yeah i mean that's that's a, that's a con for some the golems are a con for some they don't want to play with golems they don't want to have inconsistency and i understand that so that's why i mentioned that um i ran dash with second win just a two link and that's not because i prefer dash although i am becoming very accustomed to it uh i just wanted as i actually needed a lot of my links the great thing about this build is that i actually only had i had Arcane Cloak on left click, so that automatically casts as you move. And the only other button I did, so it's a two button build, right? So I used, you know, I used Slime Ability and then I used Hex Blast. I didn't, I, I only had one other button I would ever press and that was Sigil of Power. And that gives you like extra damage and damage reduction. So it actually adds damage to the Hex Blast, which increases the Ignite. Um, and that's and that was only against certain bosses when I was going to stand still and it was a one link. Uh, so... Sigil of Power, although it's a two-button build, it's not like a war cry build where you're cycling a ton of war cries and then you're doing a slam. And it's not like it's not even like Bladefall Blade Blast where you're spamming Bladefall, spamming Bladefall, and then blade blasting. It's really like one screen, hex blast, um, after the curse, and then you move. And that's it felt pretty good. But the the thing is, we needed like all our jewel sockets, despite not having a ton of active skills we needed to fit in for golems and for you know arcane cloak and for you know you want the curse at least on a three link and you want hex blast on a six link if possible. So I, I didn't really have a lot of gem sockets and I had it. I did have a cast and damage taken set up to fit in too, and so I I just had the two links for dash and second win so i mean you can figure out whatever you want you can you take freedom with that but uh, the decks can be tough to get to make dash like level 20 20 quality which it feels really good at 2020 but uh it can be tough to find you need like like 70 or so decks on gear if you can't get any more on the tree than i, I think i've got uh, but so that can be kind of tough and the other th annoying thing it's, it's very small but i figured i'd mention it is hexproof enemies we don't really make room for removing hexproof you can run like a cosprey's will or whatever it's called uh chest plate i didn't mind that much but i will say that when you run to a hexproof enemy it could take a while to kill so you you still build up doom so hex blast still gets the extra doom effect from building up doom on the curse and you just you just don't get the extra fire resist and ignite chance from flammability which can be really annoying because uh, a cursed enemy can be hard to ignite. Uh, you, you get like, I don't know, it's at least 20% ignite chance, it might be more, and you don't cast very fast, so remember that, right? And so, it can be really annoying setting up the curse and waiting for it to reach max doom and then not igniting the enemy and then you just get, you don't get very much damage. Um, so that, that's something I feel like I'd mention, although it's very small, hexproof enemies aren't that common. And if it's like a blue pack, they're no problem. They just die anyway to one ignite. If it's a rare or if it's like the plaza boss, it, it's, it's really, it's really quite annoying. Um, but it, it's not a problem that I really, I almost wasn't going to mention it, but I figured I'd just go ahead and, and uh, give that two cents there. But yeah, uh, I'm, I'm going to not talk about the build anymore. I'll leave that to the comments. If you guys have any questions or concerns, or if you want to, you know, say, hey, maybe you won't have 15 likes, but I want to see a build guide. I want to have you explain or whatever. Uh, just let me know down in the comments. And again, please do uh, support the video if you like this kind of stuff. I'm going to be doing weird off-meta builds that I create all through hardcore league this uh the rest of this league and then league start i'm going to be playing my own like maybe like a viper strike pathfinder i'm actually working on that right now i got all kinds of stupid stuff cooked up but i actually am going to try to figure out how to make good 
uh, that's 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 where I really want to find my niche in this game. And uh, I'm, I'm gonna play another off meta build next gauntlet too, even though it's like the hardest thing that you can hardest of common event in PoE. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you want to subscribe, I would appreciate that. Uh, if you want to check out the Discord, we have weekly giveaways. Every single week, I do a giveaway in the Discord for like a Steam gift card if you win. And uh, if you guys want to join in on that, it's free to join. The Discord's linked down below. If you want to follow on Twitch, uh, I'll be, I, I stream five days a week right now. And I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Check out the Outrage channel on Discord if you guys get a chance. It's important for me to share. And I'll see you guys in the next video or on the Twitch stream. Happy gaming, guys. God bless.